there is so much of fun in the markets and unfortunately because of this fun that is there in the market with its wide swings up and down left right bulls and bears taking over the control of the market at any point of time one of the most important functions that actually happens in the stock market trade life cycle is what is called as trade validation and confirmation this is the seventh lesson in the trade life cycle videos have already been uploaded on financial markets understanding equities the third one was on understanding fixed income securities followed by understanding who are the market participants and then the very important mid office function of pre trade over here the mid office function again will be there in the post trade activities as you take a look at understanding why mid office function of risk management and compliance is so critical in the trade life cycle in the previous video we discussed about trade execution methods we talked about what is cot market what is an uh, order market what are the different type of orders on the stock exchange etc and in this video we're going to talk about trade verification and confirmation a function that has been uh, the purview of the mid office function of large investment banks hedge funds etc so that the trade is as per the compliance regulatory environment of the bank itself VNC standing for verification and confirmation the mid office functions if you've heard the words confirmation verification validation compliance etc then remember this is the job of the mid office function trade validation means to verify the trade what do you verify what is the meaning of verification we use this term so often in english we use this term so often in english so what are we verifying so we are verifying whether an action has been taken against the predetermined rules and regulations as simple as that for example i send out my daughter to play in the evenings with her park and i tell her do not go near the monkey bars when i go and pop my head out of the window and i see that she is doing exactly that so i am verifying that okay so trade verification is that we have set up rules we have set up regulations we have set up limits is everybody complying with that or not that is called as trade verification or trade validation both these terms are used interchangeably in investment banks and that's perfectly normal because that's how uh, the terms are evolving in different investment banking operations in different parts of the world this is largely a middle office function middle office is uh, acronym acronymed over here as mid office in an investment bank is the department that holds the investment bank together okay because traders can be rogue traders they would love to go on be buying so many securities they love to trade they love to take speculative actions they love to hedge they don't like to hedge positions they want to maximize profit they want to minimize losses etc so traders can be a little reckless at times um settlement department can be a little slow at times so middle office is the one that holds the front office and the back office together so let's take a look at what is the role of middle office in the trade life cycle the role of the middle office is largely with setting up the compliance the internal systems of treasury at the dealing so for example if you remember what happened in 1993 i mean many of you may or may not have been born out at that time but if you all were still you know little toddlers at that time and of course you were not interested also in investment banking when you are 3 years old or 4 years old but in uh, mba case study books you have come across the case of bearings bank and how it collapsed so there were no internal systems in that case of bearings bank which did not highlight the malpractices and the trading habits of nicklesen and that resulted into a significant amount of losses for the bank in fact the losses were so high that the bank had to shut down right and the bearings bank collapse has become a case study for almost all finance experts markets experts middle office and risk management experts because they clearly states why there has to be internal systems within a bank in the last few months banks across the world have been pulled up by regulatory uh, agencies in order that they have not been compliant on many aspects so this middle office function is very critical to understand what is the meaning of compliance and what is the meaning of internal systems of treasury for example let's say the uh, internal function uh, let's say the internal system of a bank does not permit the dealer 
okay to trade more than 100 million euros in a day okay that means in a day the total value of all the trades usd eur taken up by the bank cannot exceed 100 million so that's an internal control that has been taken up by the middle office so there are so many limits in place so many dealer restrictions so many counterparty restrictions and all this have been done by the mid office the middle office role is at two stages the first one is the pre-trade uh, stage i have already uploaded take a look at lesson number four because that will explain to you what are the pre-trade requirements in the middle office these include oh the big big term kyc know your customer procedure is the bank having a robust kyc procedure are the procedures in settlement with the framework that was established by the bank and so on and so forth so kyc aml regulations are all a part of pre-trade requirements in a trade life cycle for example you might not want to take on a particular customer okay a customer walks into the uh, banks uh, branches and says that okay i want to place 50 lakh dollars as by way of uh, deposits and then you say okay no 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 we can't do that right so who stops you from doing that kyc and who has framed the kyc the middle office function so banks encounter you know working in the bank you encounter every day different examples different stories different uh, kind of customers different kind of situations it's always challenging to work in a bank trading and dealer limits are also put for example in an india in india the maximum dealer limits are given for trading in currency of usd inr they will not keep a trade a trading limit on currency of usd inr but they will keep a trading limit of usd szar the south african rand why is that the case because south african rand in the indian markets is very limited in trade it's very illiquid if it's so illiquid then who's going to trade in it right and getting counterparties to do the reverse trade will be very difficult so the trading at so banks will not want to trade in south african rand because it's a very illiquid currency in india i mean if you initiate a long position and then you want to uh, you know reverse the position later on or you want to square it off then you may not get a counterparty because there is simply no availability of counterparty right so all these rules, regulations, restrictions, compliance issues are all put in by the mid office. So middle office is an internal function. It's not a regulatory function as much as it's an internal procedures for control and compliance. The middle office also takes a look at post trade activities. And these include trade validation and trading and dealer limits are in place. Trade validation is internal verification of the trade details so many things can go wrong as i told you banking is so much fun every day there are so many challenges people say banking is very boring but in reality it's actually there's so many situations that come up where the bankers have to think out of the box to be able to get to the situation where they can understand these requirements there's an internal verification of trade details these details could highlight and rectify discrepancies in the trade. What can be the possible discrepancies in the trade? How can there be mistakes? How can there be incorrect data capture? Let's take a look at some of them. A possible discrepancy is, let's say the trade is the dealer has bought uh, 5,000 AAPL, that stands for Apple stock at $300, but the price range for the day was only 325 to 375 well, this might favor the hedge fund because obviously they bought below the day price range. Uh, how did it get executed? How was this possible? What is the price manipulation that has taken place? Was it a case of front running in the morning itself? Was it an off market trade? There's so many things that could come up when such a trade gets highlighted. Another discrepancy could be if the trade has bought 50,000 AAPL stock at $300, but the stock exchange is given a confirmation for only 51,000 stock. Now, how is that that the trade capture has taken place at 50,000, but the confirmation has come from the stock exchange at 51,000? All these are discrepancies that are caught up by the middle office trade validation team, and these get highlighted by the um, validation team to go for confirmation. So trade validation validates that the trade was within the risk management framework 
and trade details are matching. This results into a trade confirmation stage. This is now where the trade details are going to go out of the STO environment. This is between counterparties. The counterparties confirm the trade details. These include quantity, price, what we have bought or what we have traded in, as well as what is the settlement instructions that have to be followed. To let's say an example of confirmations, Hari Hedge Fund dealing room deals with KH Bank Treasury. So they have done the deal. So this is where the trade execution takes place. This is the front office job. On the other hand, the Harry Hedge Fund's back office confirms the trade details with KH Bank back office. This is the trade life cycle procedure. Once this validation internally and there's a confirmation externally, we move on to what is called as clearing and settlements. So what's the difference between validation and confirmation? Validation is an internal process. Confirmation is an external process. On the other hand, validation is a risk management procedure to mit mitigate the risk that the bank is exposed to. Confirmation is a settlement procedure so that the trades get settled in the quickest possible time. Are you looking forward to the next class? It's on TCS. Oh my God, what is the meaning of TCS? <laughs> oh, I've only heard of a company name called TCS. Can you guess what's the full form of TCS? Thank you so much for listening in and I hope you're liking these lessons in investment banking operations.